This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 8 Having established that anarchy is the only form of human society which leaves open the way to the achievement of the greatest good for mankind, since it alone destroys every class bent on keeping the masses oppressed and in poverty. Having established that anarchy is possible and since, in fact, all it does is to free mankind from the government and obstacles against which it has always had to struggle in order to advance along its difficult road. Authoritarians withdraw to their last ditches where they are reinforced by many who, though they are passionate lovers of freedom and justice, fear freedom and cannot make up their minds to visualize a humanity which lives and progress which lives and progresses without guardians and without shepherds and and pressed by the truth they pitifully ask that the manner should be put off for as long as possible this is the substance of the arguments that are put to us at this point in the discussion. The society without government, which, which maintains itself by means of free and voluntary cooperation, the society which relies in, in everything on the spontaneous action of interests and which is entirely based on solidarity and love, is certainly a wonderful ideal. Uh, they say, but like all ideals, it lives in the clouds. We find ourselves in a world which has always been divided into oppressors and oppressed, and if the former are full of the spirit of domination and have all the vices of tyrants, the latter are broken by servility and have the even worse vices that result from slavery. The feeling of solidarity is far from being dominant in contemporary society, and if it is true that men are are and become always more united it is equally true that when what one sees increasingly and which makes a deeper impression on human character is the struggle for existence which each individual is waging daily against everybody else it is competition which presses on everybody workers and masters alike and makes every man into an enemy in the eyes of his neighbor how will these men brought up in a society based on class and individual conflict ever be able to change themselves suddenly and become capable of living in a society in which everyone will do as he wishes and must do and without outside coercion and through the force of his own will seek the welfare of others with what single mindedness with what common sense would would you entrust the fate of the revolution and of mankind to an ignorant mob weakened by poverty brainwashed by the priest and today or, oh and which today will be blindly bloodthirsty while tomorrow it will allow itself to be clumsily deceived by a rogue or bow its head servilely under the heel of the first military dictator who dares to make himself master would it not be more prudent to advance towards the anarchist ideal by first passing through a democratic or socialist republic? Would there not be a need for a government of the best people to educate and to prepare the generation for the for things to come? These objectives would also wouldn't would also not have a reason if we had succeeded in making ourselves understood and in convincing readers with what we have already written. But in any case, even at the risk of repeating ourselves, it will be as well to answer them. We are always faced with the prejudice that government is a new force that has emerged from no one knows where, which it in itself adds something to the total forces and capacities of those individuals who constitute it and of those who obey it instead of all that happens in the world is done by people and government qua government contributes nothing of its own apart from the tendency to convert everything into a monopoly for the benefit of a particular party or class as well as offering resistance to every initiative which comes from outside its own clique to destroy authority to abolish government does not mean the destruction of individual and collective forces which operate in society, nor the influence which people mutually exert on each other. To do so would reduce humanity to, to being a mass of detached and inert atoms, which is an impossibility, but assuming it were possible would result in the destruction of any form of society and the end of mankind." 
the abolition of authority means the abolition of the monopoly of force and of influence. It means the abolition of that state of affairs for which social power, that is the combined forces of society, is made into the instrument of thought, the will and interests of a small number of individuals who by means of the total social power suppress for their personal advantage and for their own ideas, the freedom of the individual. It means destroying a way of social organization with which the future is burdened between one revolution and the next for the benefit of those who have been the victors for a brief moment. Mikhail Bakunin, in an article published in 1872, after pointing out that the principal means of action of the international were the propagation of its ideas and the organization of the spontaneous action of its members on the masses, adds that, quote, to whoever might claim that action so organized would be an assault on the freedom of the masses, an attempt to create a new authoritarian power, we would reply that he is nothing but a sophist and a fool. So much the worse for those who ignore the natural and social law of human solidarity to the point of imagining that an absolute mutual independence of individuals and of the masses is something possible or at least desirable. To wish it means to want the destruction of society for the whole of social life is no other than the unceasing mutual dependence of individuals and masses all individuals even the most intelligent and the strongest indeed above all the intelligent and strong each at every moment in his life is the same time its producer and its product the very freedom of each individual is no other than the resultant continually reproduced of this mass material intellectual and moral influences exerted on him by all those who surround him by the society in the midst of which he is born develops and dies to want to escape from this influence in the name of a transcendental divine freedom that is absolutely egoistic and sufficient unto itself is the tendency of non-being. This much vaunted independence of the idealists and metaphysician, metaphysicians and individual freedom thus conceived are therefore nothingness. In nature as in human society, which is no other than this same nature, all that lives only lives on the supreme condition of intervening in the most positive manner as and as powerfully as nature allows in the lives of others. The abolition of this mutual influence would be death, and when we vindicate the freedom of the masses, we are by no means suggesting the abolition of any of the natural influences that individuals or groups of individuals exert on them. What we want is the abolition of influences which are artificial, privileged, legal, or official. End quote. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.